Hello everybody, what's going on and welcome back to the My Player Career Mode. I hope you're all doing well and I want to say just before we start the video, a huge thank you for the support on the previous episode. I set a like target of 300 and you lot smashed it. Um, so thank you so much for that. There is a like target as well for today's video to get an extra episode out on Sunday. So stick around later on to hear how many you guys have to hit to guarantee another episode of the series tomorrow. So five games coming your way today. Three live and two postcom. Starting the day right here with a home game against Newcastle. Eight minutes in, we had the ball in the back of the net. Munir with the goal. However, rightfully so, it was ruled out for offside. And you'll see it better from this angle. He was ahead of when I'd kicked the ball. And uh, yeah, definitely stood in an offside position. No doubt about it. And rightfully, the goal was chalked off. But seven minutes later, a carbon copy of the first chance as we provided the same turn. This time, though, our finish was not saved by the goalkeeper. And we found the back of the net to give our side the lead. And... Again, another goal for us to add to the collection since joining United. It's not the best finish in the world. It's not completely in the corner, but it's from such a close range that it just, you know, it doesn't really matter as putting it completely in the corner as long as we hit the target. And we should have been 2 a lot. Munir here, goal gaping, just couldn't start his feet quick enough to find the finish in that one. So very, very convincing display from us, albeit the score was only 1-0. And we had an opportunity actually to make it 2 with pretty much the last kick of the game. I got the shot away here. But uh, a penalty was given for the challenge there from St. Maximin. It was never a penalty in fairness. So when I stepped up to take it, as you know from the previous video, we've been given penalty duties here at Manchester United. Just so happened that I ended up missing it. So maybe we will uh, be taken off penalty duties now I've missed that one. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's a little bit of justice. You know, it didn't really have a, an outcome on the uh, overall outcome. Uh, an outcome on the outcome? A difference on the overall outcome. Because um, we still won the game by a goal to nil. And it probably wasn't really a penalty. So yeah, missing it, I guess, is that little bit of justice for Newcastle. But after that, we had our second and final postcom match of the day in the Europa League for the visit. And I'm going to try this. Vittoria Gyamas. I've probably got that so wrong um, as uh, yeah this is the second Europa League game of the group stages of course we missed the first one through suspension after picking up a fifth yellow card in the Champions League final that we completely bottled with Atletico Madrid so we had to miss the first group stage game we got to play in the second and honestly we were atrocious in this game we were wasting chances galore and it just felt like the goal was never gonna come and when it did here I, all I could do was just shake my head because the, the chances that we passed up to score a goal the way we did, it was just so stupid. Like, you'll see from this better angle, Pereira basically tackles the ball into the goal. And I was just, yeah, it's not how you want to be scoring goals. But hey, listen, you'll take it if it means you take the lead in the game. And we may have not have been brilliant, but there was time for us to grab a second in the match. And this one was real quality about it. We let the ball run with a dummy before finding it onto the left foot and finishing it off into the bottom right corner. So... As we begin the day, two wins from two, clean sheets in both games. We're not scoring a mass amount of goals, but what we are doing is, is that we are able to create opportunities whilst not giving too much away either to the opposition. So United fans clearly happy with the start. Let's hope we can continue this into the live portion of the episode. Enjoy it. Some news as we start off the live portion of the video. We have actually been shortlisted for the September Player of the Month award. Um, I don't really expect we'll get this. There is myself, Munir, Silva and Emre Chan on the list. And I th feel like I've won of the Manchester United players have, uh, have done well this month. Munir has been in good goal scoring form. Chan's had some really good midfield performances. And of course, uh, I'm not really sure what's going on with Bernardo Silva, but I know City right now are doing okay in the league. Uh, I think they might have just gone top. So... I think last month's was Harry Kane. Yep, he got the August Player of the Month award. At that time, Spurs were top. So if that's the trend we have to go by, it is likely that it'll be Bernardo Silva. We'll keep an eye on that. For our first live game of the day, though, we travel away to the London Stadium to take on West Ham, who find themselves in around about 13th place. So the team above them, Sheffield United, we've already played against them. So by form-wise, we should be in for a victory here. The side is on your screen. Of course, we'll check out the West Ham United 11 once we get into the game. So let's do it. Here is the 11 for West Ham. And I have to say, I'm not really sure on too many of their uh, their players. I know obviously Lanzini, who's playing out on the wide area, the right wing, I believe. But other than that, there wasn't too many recognisable faces in their starting 11. 
Dan James plays the simple ball into our on-running movement. And we've hit the post. And he's come back out towards Andres Pereira, who's made no mistake with the finish. It's, it's a simple, simple move to get through. I made the move. I wasn't sure that Dan James was actually going to play the pass the way he did. I thought he might hold on to it for a little bit longer to then allow me the time to run through and then play the ball. But he played it into the path that I was already making the move into. So, fairness to him. It was a great ball through. And uh, I should have scored from the first attempt. It's back off the woodwork. Pereira is there to tap home or smash home the finish in the end. And other than that, it's been a very poor start to the game. Emre Chan searching ball over the top for Aaron Wan-Bissaka. He will get there as well and deliver the cross. And Kadira heads it away at the near post. As Rabio goes for something pretty ridiculous from so far out. That if that had worked, that was definitely goal of the season. Munir is in behind here. And this could be dangerous for West Ham. Munir as he held on for it too long. Emre Chan kept out by Bernardoni. But it's much better from Manchester United who are beginning to find their fluidity. And you don't want to be seeing that if you're West Ham. We scored when we'd not really done much, you know, in the way of quality. And now we're actually beginning to play our usual football. This could get bad for West Ham. Skirinja with the header. It's down in the box. And Ejene has the volley cleared off the line in the end. We're trying to keep it alive. But we've been able, unable to do that. And we are a minute away from half time. And it cannot come sooner here for the home side. Emre Chan towards Rabio, Back to Chan. And these two combine well to keep hold of it. Is there a way through for Manchester United? Rabio somewhat made a move, but then decided against it in the end. We go back again. Two minutes additional time. We are over that. Rabio seeks it. Finds the pass. Is there the ball into the centre? No, there is not. And that will be it for the first half of football here at the London Stadium. Very slow to get going. But as you saw with the back end of that first half, we are beginning to play football the usual way. So let's just continue this in the second and not make the mistake of allowing West Ham back into this game. They've not been in it so far. Lanzini with a free kick over the wall, and De Gea keeps it out. It was for a challenge that Aaron Wan-Bissaka had made on Manuel Lanzini as well, and he picked up a yellow card in the process. And the first sign of life from the home side, tipped behind by David De Gea. Rabiot looking for Martial, gave the ball away, and that's the reason I emphasised before we went into half-time about the fact we needed to come out and dominate the second half like we were at the back end of the first period because one thing that teams that I've played in, we have been guilty of doing in the past is allowing teams back into games when we've been won the lot going into half time. And that's what's happened here as well. We've not come back out in the same sort of style as we ended the first and it's allowed West Ham to grow in confidence. And you could argue they've been the better team here. Luckily, they've not really created too much to test us just yet as Martial takes that ball under control well and plays it off of Mbai for a corner. 17 minutes to play. We've not even had a sight of a second goal yet. So let's see if we can change that. Rabiot's delivery near post. He's flicked on. And in the end, it's worked its way through towards Bernardoni. So, yeah, we're looking to just see this game out. But it's not been convincing. Rabiot to Martial. Back heels it towards Oz. Turning on it as well. Martial's in again. And there he is. With the finish. 2-0 United. Game, set and match. And that is what we wanted. To come back, find this second goal and make sure. And we can celebrate as well now because I feel like that's the three points over and done with. Ten minutes to play. It's imperative we get these wins on the board as well because uh, up until this point, Spurs are actually undefeated. They just lost in this game week to Everton by a goal to nil. So they have just give, uh, been given their first defeat of the season. So this result here will take us three points behind the league leaders Manchester City at the moment. So yeah, still very much to play for. I think we'll be three behind. We might even be the same as them. Rabio's ball is going to find us here. There's a little bit of space for us to work with. There's a definite shirt pull as well there, ref. That advantage was non-existent. It barely lasted. I mean, there was no point in playing the advantage at all then, was there? It doesn't matter. We've won the game. The advantages, man, they're just so stupid. Like, they never, they never work properly. That should have been longer. Like, it was basically a second if that. We then lost it. But anyway, full time, 2-0 win. Another one on the board. For next, I think we are with England, but it is international friendly, so I'm not going to be playing those. So we'll come back for our next game in the Premier League. Brighton at home before we end off the day with Standard Liège in the Europa League. So two more live games coming for you. And we see ourselves up into third place. We are actually on the same point as first and second, City and Spurs. So I did get it wrong. Same points behind them on goal difference. City lead the way. Eight goals more than us um, in terms of the goal difference. So we need to work on that. 
And that's always been a case, it feels like, during this series, that we're not scoring a lot of goals. So I don't know whether or not it's just the game this year is a little bit harder or if I'm not playing as well as I did in previous FIFAs. That could be it as well. Um, but regardless, we'll go into the Brighton game. We actually haven't played too many big teams yet. The only one, of course, we, I guess you could say from the t traditional six would have been Liverpool. And that came in our second game of the season. So other than that, we've had, this is now eight games in a row where you would consider us to be the favourites by quite some margin. So we've got to be winning these games because we do have a period of time where it is going to get tough for us. Wambasaka's pass will just about make it and take that touch away as well. Releasing Andres Pereira in the process. What can he do with it? Delivers the cross. Lewis Dunk with the header away. It's only gone as far as AWB though, who picks it back up for United. And now there's a chance for us to try and open up this Brighton defence. Emre Chan again in possession towards Pereira. Pereira back for him. We just got to be using this ball better than that. Emre Chan just gives it straight back to Brighton. And he was under not a lot of pressure there at all. Rabio towards Munir with a flick up in the volley. Which nine times out of ten ends like that. Spurs just gone in front against Crystal Palace as well. So they will take back top spot solely. Unless we can find a goal here to go in front as it stands. Brighton playing some lovely stuff at times. Um, they are giving us a bit of a game here. I wouldn't say we've been bad or anything like that. But Brighton are up for this fight. So we can't really afford to make any mistakes today, it seems like. As Rabio finds Emre Chan. We're closing in on half time. No goal to show for it just yet. Dan James off towards Chan again. He has not had a great first half of football, it has to be said. He's given the ball away a couple of times. That ball through towards Aaron Wambasaka. Releases him. What can he do? Across the face of goal to Munir. And there is the goal we were looking for. Excellently done by the right back of Manchester United. AWB, such a good choice to have as your right back if you haven't already tried him out in career mode, ladies and gentlemen. And that is what he does for you. Gets forward, lays it on the plate. Munir has to finish. It's not an easy finish at all either. That came at pace. The ball was kind of underneath him. But he sorts his feet out quick enough to find the finish. Rabio, Munir, look at the space I've got here. If he can find his right footed. Passed into the bottom corner to secure the three points. It's the finish that we needed on the weaker right side. I am trying to work on that one star weak foot as well. I've been looking at the accomplishments and how I can do that. You have to try and get some goals on the volley from outside the penalty area and such. Um, they're difficult to do with the one star. But that there, all we had to do is just make sure we hit the target. And that's exactly what we did. 2-0 Manchester United. Brighton dominating possession here. 50-odd percent more. Well, not more, but 50-odd percent for them in the game. Hasn't mattered, though. Fifth goal of the Premier League season for us. And it keeps up as well with having a goal contribution so far a game. Because that's what we're managing at this moment in time. And up until that point, we hadn't got an assist or a goal to our name. So we're keeping up with that as Mane's coming on for Dan James. What a change to be able to make off the bench. Solly March for Brighton may just get caught out in possession. Did well, actually, there to play that ball off. But it's too little too late then for Brighton, who are going to fall to a defeat here. It's another win on the board for Manchester United as our current form continues. We're keeping up with the goal a game ratio as well for goal contributions. Life is looking good right now here at Old Trafford. But remember, I said it before we kicked off this game. In terms of the top teams, we've only faced one so far. So it's going to be an interesting period coming up when we've got a few of them mixed in uh, in very close games and seeing how we come out of those games. You know, that could be where our title credentials are questioned. But for the moment, I'm enjoying playing here at United and the football hopefully is showing that in return as well. We're not conceding many goals, but we're also able to contribute up the other end as well in the attacking sense. Time for our final game of today up against Standard Liège away at their place. Two out of two wins in the Europa League. This could be three out of three, which will pretty much already send us through to the knockout rounds. But let's be real. We're looking to reach the final of the Europa League. Um, anything less than that is a little bit of an underachievement, I'd say, especially with a team like this. We should go all the way in the competition. It's a strong side. And I've also had a haircut heading into this game as well. Let me know what you guys think. But for the final time today, let's see what we can do in this game right here. Here is Munir. There's a run straight through the middle to be played with if we can use it effectively. Pereira turning on it as well. Got to be the first goal of the game and surely it is. That is quality. We worked our way through. Just waited for the pass to come. It came in the end by Andres Pereira. And a spin into the finish has given us the lead here at Standard Liège. 
And uh, I have to say as well, there is openings for us like this running from central midfield on a couple of occasions so far. That's not really worked just yet. But um, this one paid off brilliantly. Give us that sort of time and space in the box. That's where it's going, you know. We're not going to miss that. Rabio Munir. Munir goes for the shots and kept out by Herrera. It was a very good effort as well from Munir. I did make the run. Um, I did also ask for it, but he chose instead to take it on himself. Can't complain at that. He had a sight and he felt like he could send it in. It wasn't a bad effort by any means. Good save by the goalkeeper though. Rabio with the resulting corner sends it in. It's uh, headed away, but not quite fully away just yet. And now it will be hooked clear away. Three minutes to play here. Stan Liege needs something inspirational to come right now. Otherwise, they're heading to a defeat. And Boljevic is going to try and provide that as he feeds the ball through, which Skirinjar cuts out. Not being brilliant second half. And that seems like a story for us as Martial will feed that ball. I'm going to look to give him it back, but it wasn't on in the end. Greenwood's run through the centre is on. Mason Greenwood keeps hold of this ball. Can he find the cross to the centre? He can, but it's headed away. Only as far as Emery Chan sends it back in towards us. We're trying to work the space. He's just about done that. Deflected shots. Trickles its way through to the goalkeeper. It is full time here. And it will be the victory. Hang on a second. What's going on? There's still an opportunity. Nope. There is the whistle. We get another win. But I'm beginning to see a regular occurrence in these games. We find a goal in the first half. And then we don't come out in the second and look to apply, apply the pressure. I don't know if that's just something that you do with every single team that you play for in the game. And if that's the way it works. And that's sort of how the CPU decides to play out these games. Let me know what your, you... What's happening in your guys' saves? Because it happened at Atletico. Pretty sure it might have happened at Norwich. And it's happening here again as well. So it might just be the way that AI plays once they go in front. But professional job done. Let's sign off the rest of the episode. And uh, see where that leaves us for the table and whatnot. So here is the league table to end off the day there. Nine Premier League games have been played. We sit third. Only behind on goal difference. So that's something we can look to work on. However, we do face one of the, I'd say, traditional big six, maybe big eight, you could call them now. Arsenal, they will kick off the next episode after that. It's Everton as well, who are currently sat in fourth. So now we're beginning to play against the sort of bigger teams in the Premier League. This is where we will be really tested. So coming up for you, Arsenal will then probably sim the Carabao Cup round of 16 against Birmingham. I'll see if we are away or at home for that game. Everton after that. Then we have Standard Liège again in the Europa League. And then Palace with Spurs coming up in November alongside Leicester. And then into December, City, Chelsea in there, Wolves as well. So some tough games coming up for us. In terms of our Europa League group as well, we'll take a quick look at that as well to see how it looks. Uh, nine points is what we currently sit on. Standard Age and uh, Vittoria are both on four, which means if we win our next game, we are secure in terms of um, the, uh, the knockout stages. So that's very, very good to see. As in terms of our player stats as well, where do we currently sit on the assist and the goal charts? Five goals in nine games puts us at rank seven. Bernardo Silva got nine in nine. We've got Gabriel Jesus as well with nine in nine. I'm still second on the assist charts. And I forgot as well to check to see who had won the player of the month. And I think the news article will have gone by now. So that's a bit frustrating because I didn't actually see. Oh, there it is. So yeah, Bernardo Silva got it. Not surprised. I did talk about the fact that City were top at the time and he's got nine in nine. So you can't grumble at that. He's having an incredible month. So yeah, that he is the winner of the player of the month. But guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. If you did enjoy it, a like would be greatly appreciated. And thank you as well. I've probably already said this in the post -com section for your incredible support on the previous episode. I asked for, what was it, 300 likes and you hit over 400. So that is just mind-blowing. So... If we can hit 300 likes again on today's video, I will give you another My Player Career Mode episode tomorrow at the same time as always, 4 p.m. UK time. Well, might be 4, might be 6. Uh, depends on what happens during the day and what time I get around. So recording and editing. You should be seeing this at 6 p.m. on the Saturday. So I hope you've had a, a good Saturday as well. Have a great evening and uh, have a great Sunday as well. If you are playing your football games, I know a lot of them are being called off, especially near where I live. And then I wish you all the best. Hopefully you guys score goals and whatnot. But until next time, anyways, I will see you all again soon. Adios.